Let me ask you guys something. I, I got into a conversation with my mother-in-law recently about, um, you know, about you know evil landlords that are exploiting their tenants by, you know, um, <laughs> that are like, uh, you know, and it's, and it's like these people they make so much money and they're just exploiting the tenants, you know, and and uh, and you know they're only making these enormous, you know, uh, luxurious high-rise you know, apartment complexes to, to cater to the ultra rich. And, you know, what about the little guy? You know, he's getting robbed by this evil landlord. <laughs> How would you guys respond to that? Um, well, I, for one, would first say that, unfortunately, that person is extremely ignorant of economics, which is usually the problem in most situations. It's, uh, they're angry at the wrong people. Uh, are, are there slumlords out there? Absolutely. Are there people that will take advantage of these, these type of situations? Absolutely. But it, that's not the overall cause. The cause is government being in the way in the first place, whether it be, you know, federal, local, state, um, whatever. The, uh, with, with the regulations that they put up and, and the, of course, the, the hidden inflation tax, which affects everything and everybody at all times. Uh, prices continue to go up and up and up, and certain people that would be willing to <clears throat> build shorter, uh, small, uh, rather cheaper, cheaper apartments, cheaper places to live, uh, and stuff like that. So people didn't have to spend as much money are forced out of the market altogether, just like they are forced out of every market because the because of the regulations and and the cronyism that goes on. And that's that's why that's why these people have to pay this you know price. But like I was saying before, especially in the city, the idiots will keep coming and keep paying the prices anyway. So why would they stop? They're just they're the people the people that are making all this money and the evil landlords on the whole are just taking advantage of what's been given to them. They're just using the system the way it's designed to be, which is cronyism across the board. And that's how that's how the rich that is how the rich get richer and the rest of us stay the same or get worse on a daily basis well my response to that uh, question Danilo is to ask the person to explain this scenario okay rich guy somehow finds a reason to buy up a bunch of land and build a bunch of high-rise apartments on it all right uber rich guy billionaire T Donald Trump Donald Trump Somehow buys uh, an island and puts a, and there's ten thousand people on this island, all natives, and they agree to sell the island to him. He uh, builds up a bunch of high rises and says, "Look, if you can't pay to live here, you're out." All right. What's going to happen to his investment that he put into that if no one can afford to live there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he's gonna. That's gonna go belly up. He's gonna have to go bankrupt. Yeah, he's, gonna all, money. he's gonna lose all that property for not being able to upkeep it or defend it or it be even be worth defending, and it's gonna get retaken over, right? So if we have, you know, the the whole in New York, that's the big thing. Oh, they're buying up areas, they're gentrifying it, and they're pushing minorities out because the minorities can't afford to live there, right? At what point do they run out of enough people to pay that extra high rent and have to either subsidize the living through government handouts because that's what happens or does that person go bankrupt and have to cut back on his losses and charge lesser rent so therefore those people move back in it's the supply and demand that that somehow communists do not realize exist regardless of what economic system <clears throat> is being enforced even in, even in the strictest most absolute 100% to the book communist state supply and de demand still reigns supreme which enforces a bit of capitalism so you have this situation where they it's not a broken window fallacy but it's a lack of economic intelligence situation like you said Danilo and my biggest thing to them is it just explain to me how supply and demand works for everything else except for this scenario or this boogeyman that you're you're coming up with. And a lot of people I, I try to help them make them realize that their point is completely off base. And and that that's really my only point to the whole thing is like show me where the, the principles of supply and demand do not dominate the situation. 
Like if you have a billion house or a billion apartments for rent, but no one can afford to live there, you're going to lower the prices so people can move in to maximize your profits because you have to make an ROI or else you'll go bankrupt. People think of this evil capitalist landlord <laughs> who owns all this land and then just can sit on the money in the land and not make <laughs> a, a profit off of it. No one's going to do that. Donald Trump doesn't build a hotel and charge exorbitant prices to not make a profit. Mm -hmm. If there was no profit to be made, he wouldn't have put the hotel there. <clears throat> so that's really all I have to say. It's such a clear-cut example, you know, of, you know, okay, so you want Big Brother to fix this by rent controlling. So therefore you're saying that that person who's renting you out a uh, place to live doesn't own that property outright. You know, it was like I was telling you guys the other day. I was talking to a guy who uh, said, I asked him, can you own land in the United States? And he said, well, yeah. And I said, well, can you make crack in your house that's on this land? And he said, well, no. And I said, well, then do you really own that land? And he sat there for a second and was like, <laughs> no, I don't. I said, so the government owns that land or because people believe that this fictional entity owns that land, it happens like that. So – the same argument happens for anyone wanting the government to force landowners, landlords to subsidize rent control and give them government handouts. It's a fascist – like you said, it's a corporatist relationship to hand out huge welfare payments to these landlords to keep certain minority or certain st statistics you want for an area. Well, let me let me just preface that for a minute. What, what, what about my mother-in-law? She comes from communist Romania, right? So she grew up in communism. So, so you can understand the level of economic ignorance that she has. And she came over here, and um, and of course, you know, the first thing she's like, you know, she's like, there was no unemployment in my in my country, right? And um, which is which is a completely idiotic argument, right? Like like full employment is the goal, you know, it's, if full employment is the goal, then let's just, you know, throw away all the machines and dig ditches with, with teaspoons. <laughs> we'll, we'll all be employed, right? We'll, we'll all starve and so, and be impoverished. So, so, you know, and, and then she also says like, you know, living should be free. Why should I have to pay a price to live? <laughs> and I tell her, I'm like, I'm like, okay, so the guy who, or, or the company that brought you electricity from that light bulb right there, see, he paid you know, millions of dollars to bring electricity and to bring to bring water through your faucet, and then the the food that you bought, how much money was 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 invested and spent to to grow that food and transport it. <laughs> so they they should pay for that, but you shouldn't pay to get it. <laughs> they should be enslaved to, to appease you. Yeah. It's her argument, that's, basically. Yeah, of course. Well, they yeah, but that's that, that's exactly you know you. you when you first started off explaining about it, that, and I said the same thing before, it's, it's economic ignorance, and and you were hit, you were hitting on that before, Dave, about how it's not they don't they just they don't understand they don't get it they just don't understand because it's, it hasn't been explained to them or if it it's because it's been purposely pur purposely been withheld for them and they just know they know who to get angry they know who to get angry at based on who they're told to get angry at. Oh, yeah, and they they're not propagized to be propagandized to be angry at, at at who the government wants to distract them with. Well, yeah, of course, because it's it's a matter of the there. As I said earlier, there's there's there are there there are the really bad actors, and there are the ones that are trying to take advantage of that, and they are. And those are those are the, those people are the focus, and everybody else gets associated with them, and they get lumped into one big thing, and that's what <laughs> they. That's what the average person gets told, okay. They're the evil guys. They're the ones you want to go after. They're, you know, you can't, you, you can't, uh, no, nothing get, can get done because they're so greedy and they want, you know, they just want what's theirs and they're going to, you know, that's why people think, oh, it's, it's so expensive to live. Well, yeah, because you need, you need to work for that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you were saying about the, the subsidies, Dave, about how that, that's what, that's how, that's how the system propagates itself because, the the really rich ones the the soup the, the the super bad actors are the ones that get the most benefits from the government and they force everybody else out of the market and so they are able to charge whatever they want and if they do come to the point where they charge too much and people start moving out where in the free market 
they would collapse. Well, they would have to lower their prices or the store would collapse. They get propped up even more. So they're able to continue to keep charge. Even they'll lower the prices a little bit, uh, just enough to get people to come in with the subsidies. And as soon as everything levels off again, they'll start increasing the prices ever so slowly again, and the whole cycle will continue. It will we'll we'll continue itself. So it's. Uh, I just thought of something. You know, any any communists that and and I equate statist to communist with the same thing. <laughs> but any communist that believes that a landlord is evil for charging a certain amount of rent, I just want them to look back and, and think about their holy leaders and. And I just want them to realize that their governments are who issue building permits, rent licensing, uh, all this other stuff that is included to actually have people uh, able to rent from you. Um, so their governments are the ones allowing this to happen to them. Um, and then they want government to fix it. You know, like, a, like we always harp on, government, government's job is is to make problems that only they can solve. Mm -hmm. And building housing in an area that the market doesn't demand and then overcharging for it is a problem that only government can fix. Temporarily. It, it, yeah, temporarily because it, it runs out of money, but you get what I'm saying. Like it it's, not designed to, it's not designed to fix it. It's no, no. Designed, it's, it's designed to give, you, give the illusion of it being fixed. It's the band-aid, the band-aid over the cancer, right? Is what it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, band -aid. The, the the doctor, the oncologist saying, well, we cut out 90% of the tumor. Good luck. <laughs> but, uh, 